Well, good morning, and welcome to this devotion on Thursday, July 30th. Um, before I get started, just want to say a big thank you to Pastor Josh for coordinating, preparing, and leading the healing service last night, as well as Judy Key for her musical additions, and I think I may have heard the flute on at least one of the pieces uh, from Rebecca. So thanks to all. Thank you for submitting your prayer requests in the form of the visuals for the hands and uh, participating in these creative ways to try to remain connected to um, still address the meaningful uh, components in our lives and how those interact with our life of faith. So um, appreciate everybody's participation. If you did not, uh, if you were not able to participate last night live, that is obviously in our Facebook page, University Lutheran Facebook page videos, as well as been posted to the um, our University Lutheran Church YouTube channel. So um, it was very meaningful. It was wonderful to be um, participating at home with my wife, Renee. And so thanks to all who made that possible. Today, I'm gonna skip around to a few spots in John's Gospel and beginning with what's called the, the prologue. So this is John chapter one, uh, verses one through four. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. Those words should be familiar in the beginning, uh, for it is how Genesis starts. So we have right off the bat, uh, the gospel writer John making these connections back to the story of creation, back to the first Adam, and then the new creation, which comes in Christ as Paul uh, oftentimes wrote about. Now I'm gonna skip forward a little bit this is in John's Gospel, chapter 18, verses, verse 1. And the setting for this is um, the night before his, or the night of his arrest. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place there where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. So we have in the beginning, we have the story of creation. We have, of course, the Garden of Eden. And now uh, faint echoes of that, or maybe not faint, but echoes of that in John's Gospel. And then this is my favorite. And this is John uh, chapter 20, verses uh, 13 to 15. And this is at the this Easter morning at the tomb. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? supposing him to be the gardener. She said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Supposing him to be the gardener. So in John's Gospel, we have this great... Um, connection back to the creation story. I've also been reflecting on, and Pastor Josh has talked about this with the parables, the series of parables we've been going through in Matthew, how they're drawn from everyday life around them. And thinking back on Jesus' use of illustrations, stories, and everything, the vast majority are agricultural. And it's not because he would have been unaware of technology certainly the technology of the day, stories of Masada and the Roman siege and the Roman um, you know, weapons of war would have been part of his upbringing, those stories of resistance. 
Jesus did say one time about, um, you know, before building a tower to count the cost or um, before going out and preparing for battle, uh, waging war to, again, count your numbers. So there were these others, but they're less. Most of them were organic. Most of them had to do with the earth. Most of them had to do with creation. And um, so maybe dwell on that a bit today, just the fact of how much of the natural earth, God's creation, God's ongoing creation, is a testament to God's glory. Um, it was beautiful to be awoken last night. I have a roof over my head, and that's what makes it beautiful to be able to hear the sound of rain in a comfortable bed. Um, this morning, gray skies, but it was great to see the earth watered and um, I've been working out, and I'll show you in a moment. Uh, for those that would like to stick around, I'll show you a few uh, things that have been going on in the garden in the last several weeks. But let me close with a word of prayer for those that want to punch out, and the rest can stay for a five-minute garden tour. So let's pray. Holy God, thank you for this new day. As droplets continue to work their way through the leaves of the trees to fall on the earth, as birds are singing and dogs are barking, this is a new day. So help us to rejoice in those gifts that you give to us. Help us to reach out to others who are in need of a call or a note or a friendly word. Help us to be your people, loving you and loving our neighbors. And this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Off to the garden. There's our sign, which we keep on our deck. And um, Judy had given me some plants earlier that I dug up. Container gardening and I, I do not do a good job. And I went several days when it was 90 degree heat and failed to notice that yes, plants and clay pots really need a lot more water. Pulling up the grass from this area, so eventually this will all be natural area. The biggest surprise I guess I'd like to share with you um, is our watermelon vine. I noticed that there were two watermelons growing. They're babies. And so I thought, well, I'll do a good thing and I will put them on top of mulch. That little black thing is the remainder of what was a baby watermelon. So I'm not sure if the mulch, through its decomposition, somehow uh, releases some kind of a, a gas or whether I accidentally put it directly in sunlight, <laughs> but I killed them. Now, the nice fun thing is God was building a couple others. <laughs> so I have not touched those. <laughs> and that one and this one are doing quite nicely now that I've kept my hands off them. Our pepper plants, Green peppers are just about ready to harvest. Jalapenos, I grabbed a few of those yesterday. The tomato plants continue to grow absolutely crazy, but nowhere near. Amy Cribb, who got tens of thousands of pounds of tomatoes from her garden. Um, but the cherry tomatoes have been a success. Um, the yellow peppers are coming in nicely. And the cantaloupe even is sprouting some cantaloupes. And it looks like a critter enjoyed gnawing on that one. But, but I found that some of my secret to my gardening has to be just to learn to leave things alone. So I hope you enjoy your day and God's peace be with you. Bye-bye.